it's by La Antonada. No, it, it, now it's, now. Oh, it's Oracle and Ina. Oracle and Orange Grove. Yeah, Ina. Oracle, okay, and Orange Grove, okay. Yeah, exactly. they call it, it's called, uh, uh, Plaza del Oro or something like that. It's a, that's the name of the place now. But, uh, it used to be an, it used to be an English florist. It used to be a flower shop. But they, uh, there's a guy that um, works with, works, he volunteers with, with, uh, with us with, at TRN and he's very knowledgeable about heart, about uh, maintenance. So he, he, uh, he, you know, hooked down some two by fours and got the, got the kennels all set up for the, got the new kennel set up for the doggies and wow. made it big enough so that I could get in and out of the kennels, you know, wow. and yeah, he's a, he really did a fantastic job. He's a, he's a very nice gentleman. How old is he, John? You're right? Oh gosh, I would say he's probably, I would say he's probably a little bit younger than I am. Okay. Uh, does he work for TRN or does he work for? No, he doesn't work he's for. He's just a volunteer. He's just a volunteer. Yeah, he's just doing it out of the kindness of his heart. Oh wow. Yeah. He's a very lovely yeah, person. Yeah. Yep. But he was there today, and I told him that I appreciated him hooking all the kennels up for the doggies and, you know, making everything straighten around and just doing a fantastic job. And then he had to go fix his AC. He, oh, okay. Yeah, he had AC problems at his house, so he had to go. And he has, like... I don't know how many dogs, so you want to make sure is get his AC fixed for his ki for his doggies. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think he's married, so he might want to get his AC fixed for his wife too. But I could be wrong. Sounds like a kind thing to do. Yeah. Wish my car. Ran in. I don't know if I ran into the the. Uh, I think I ran into the post out there. I hit something. I can't remember even doing it. Uh oh. Weird. I gotta get it fixed at some point. Wow. Yeah. But, that insurance. But I'm afraid if I. Um, I'd rather not make a claim. Right. I'd rather see if maybe, um, see how much um, state will charge me to get fixed. Yeah. Yep. So you've been hanging out with Julie a little bit this week? Yeah, she's been kind of been helping me out with that. Glad you're working with her. Play. Yeah, and she's been doing some shopping and give her money and she goes out and buys some stuff for me, which has been wonderful. Cool. Pretty good. Uh, 
you know, some days are good, and some days not so good for her bronchitis. So, you know, oh, yeah. yesterday, yesterday she had a pretty good day, and we played some Scrabble. I don't, I tried to play Scrabble with you, but uh, I don't know if we, I don't know if we, if you want to try that again or if you. Yeah, it's just hard for me to do it because I always have to lay down. Oh, I see. It's a little difficult to get to the board. Okay. Your, your little board works all right. Yep. It's just the pain is such a pain in the butt. Yep. Um, yeah, so yesterday she was feeling pretty good. And so... We played some Scrabble last night. Um, I think she took a shower, which was a big deal. And then yeah. she, uh, I think she even washed some clothes, which was amazing. And I, I think she also, um, well, I mean, it's not one of the, your favorite things to do when you have, when you're sick, you know? No, that's true. So, uh, I think she also mopped the floors a little bit. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that or her mom, or mom, Zoila did. I don't remember who did, but that was nice. Yeah. All that tile looks like it'd be a real pain in the neck. Yeah. Should get somebody to clean your floors. Yeah. Easier to clean than carpet, though. It is a lot easier than vacuum. Yeah. We had vacuum last week. Well, that's good. The vacuum's got a bunch of duck in it, so I need to clean it out. And haven't felt like doing that. Yeah. That's understandable. And uh, uh, I guess Costco delivers sometimes, so we sure need. Yeah. yeah, we we had some. We needed to get some laundry soap and some some dryer towels and I think some. Uh, softener. So, yeah, so she got that stuff from Costco. I haven't been to Costco in a long time. Hmm. I remember a long, long time ago, I remember... Kevin was, Kevin, you know, remember Kevin Reed? Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was going to work at Costco, I think. He did. Yeah. Remember seeing him at the Costco way out at Oracle area. Oh, wow. Okay. So you did see him out there. Okay. Yeah, I was still married to Steve. Wow. That was a while ago. Yeah. He's, uh, he's one of my friends on Facebook, but... I hardly ever, I don't know, the last time I heard anything about Kevin, or I saw something from Kevin, I think was, oh, yeah. that was a couple of years ago, probably, or something. Yeah, but he lives, he lives some some other state now, so. I always wonder what happened to Rodney. I remember Rodney, I don't know Rodney. His, he had a, whenever he lived here in Tucson, whenever Kevin lived here in Tucson, uh, he had a roommate, his name was Rodney. Whenever I had my accident, 
Rodney came to the hospital one time with Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was about 30 years ago. Ah. Well, that's cool. How old is he going to be? Notifications. Um, notifications. You are all caught up. Press the attempt to access notification settings. Notifications. All notifications unselected. Optional alerts that appear on screen. System alert. Now playing. The food that's built America. Four minutes remaining. Channel 36 HSTRYHP. Press OK to watch. How old is he going to be tomorrow? Um, 73. Okay. My birthday is December and his is. So you know what Julie's doing? The neighbor across the street? Yeah. Well, she went to the store. She went to... She went to... Um, Walmart. She likes to go to Walmart. Mm-hmm. I am not a Walmart shopper. Right. She likes to go to the Walmart right here? Real I close? I believe so. Huh. Well, that's cool. Yeah, they have, uh, over at that Walmart, uh, they have this, this one area that's where they, they have the pastries and the, the little bakery area, and, uh, they're not too expensive, and, and they have all sorts of goodies over there, you know, like, yeah. yeah Their apple pies are really delicious. Yeah. Really good. I went there and got some chicken one time. 4 p.m. The food is built America. 60 minutes. Channel 36 HSTRYHP. This is about dogs. Press OK to view program options. Oh, that's cool. The food is built America. The Food That Built America, Season 4, Episode 15, Doggy Dog. Now playing The Food That Built America, Season 4, Episode 15, Doggy Dog. It's the early 1900s, and a New York City bakery owner... Volume 26, 27, 30, 31. Bennett was a baker on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Volume 38, 44. Experience. The one thing he didn't have was a lot of customers. Radical changes in the way Americans shop threaten the survival of small business. Supermarkets are now adding bakeries within them, so people can do one-stop shopping and don't need to go to a bakery. He can see the writing on the wall. The day of the independent baker is, is ending. To ensure his bakery's survival, Bennett needs to come up with a product that people can't get at the grocery store. At age Bennett, he realized there was a gap in the market. What he lands on will one day give rise 
to a $3 billion a year market, giving Americans a product they've never thought they needed. Bennett's invention will bring joy to millions of Americans for generations to come, even though they won't be the ones eating it. The United States is home to 77 million dogs and 58 million cats. And each year, Americans spend roughly $3 yeah, that's fine. billion to feed them with over 22,000 different kinds of pet foods and treats. We see our pets as an extension of ourselves, and we want to give them the best. Feeding our pets is an important part of the bond we share. But up until the late 19th century, pet food doesn't exist. Prior to mid-century, dogs are really about utility. So they're used as instruments to help people hunt, and they live behind the house. Cats were seen as pest control. Dogs ate table scraps. Why would you spend your hard-earned money on food for scavengers and pest control? It doesn't make sense for the American public to buy it until a handful of visionaries see an opportunity no one else sees. People don't care about cats. They don't keep them as pets. I do. I've got three. These innovators recognize that people are moving closer to their pets and seeing their pets as more than just utility animals. They're part of the family. They ultimately wanted to create a product in a market that didn't exist. Or in the cereal division. Not even dog food division. So this new role of dogs really gives birth to this whole market.